Um, we are going to be doing more flying with On Air today. Uh, but today we are going to be doing it in the Beechcraft King Air 50i. It's a twin engine aircraft, which um, I'm going to wind up having a little bit of a problem with because its battery is not very large. And. Uh, oh, it looks like I've already had problems. Nope. Okay. Um, so I may wind up having to reload because I have three minutes until I can actually accept the uh, cargo that we are going to be playing today. And then even longer until that cargo is loaded. So we may have to stall just a little bit. See, the reason why I say I can't even accept the mission for three more minutes is because... We've discovered some interesting information about on air. So, this was brought to us by somebody in Buona's chat a few days ago. So, apparently, um, at least where VAs are concerned, and if you have the requisite skills also as, as an individual, um, in order to take last minute flights, last minute flights pay absolutely ludicrous rates. Uh, it goes up to four times the base price. Um, so, for instance, what was originally... Reload my list here. What was originally uh, a 31,000... 31.5,000 job that we're about to fly is currently at 125,000. And here in a second, it's going to tick over and become... Uh, it's maximum price. Yeah, 126.080. So I'm going to take that job. And then I'm going to go back to my company and I'm going to load that job because that is an amazing job. All right. So you see that on-air link uh, connected? That's something that we're doing with right now. We're going to take printed magazines. We're going to go ahead and load them. And then we're going to get our maximum fuel because it's going to pretty much take our max. That's close enough. Okay. For those of you who haven't seen this before, I'm going to go ahead and turn on on-air window. Not detected. make sure that it's working <laughs> there we go okay all right so this is the on-air manager that i'm looking at um so this is what i'm loading where i'm where it's going where i'm at it's how much it weighs this is all my fuel um i'm paying 528 a gallon gas and then we're gonna take this, and now now I'm gonna say confirm and fly now because I wanna hopefully do this without having to reload this. Thing. It looks like it's gonna take us about 3.2 minutes to load all of these printed magazines and one minute to load all of our fuel. And then we're gonna head to Kuno, the UNO. Uh, so this tells us where we're going. I can actually look and see what our actual alternate is. I think. And remember where that is in my. Uh... There it is. KST. All 
All right, so now we just wait for that to load while we look at our aircraft and hope that we don't get a low voltage move. Because I can't turn off my instruments or I'll lose my flight plan. And uh, apparently the battery on this aircraft is, um, shall we say, not the best. Go ahead and flip over here so you can see the aircraft. Uh, we'll be looking for a warning down here that says low voltage. It will also cause this to light up. Because at that point, we no longer have the ability to start the aircraft. But uh, I'm having an absolute blast with on-air. On-air is... It, so it's it, there's a lot of complexity, but it's easy to start. Very interesting that way. Um, it's very easy to start, but in order to get the most out of it, you really got to work the system. You got to know how the rules work. But like last minute jobs, you can get up to three times the amount of the job in uh, last minute bonus. So if you wait until the last minute, if you wait until 23 minutes until it disappears, you can get a total of four times the base price. Um, which is what we're flying today. This this flight, I was very, very lucky. There was only maybe 10, 10 flights leaving from this particular uh, airport. And one of them was, you know, an hour or so until it turned 23 minutes, which is the maximum last minute bonus. And it hit that 23 minutes right at like... Uh, six minutes into the stream i was like oh that's perfect that's perfect we're gonna get a maximum value flight uh today leaving from klgc which i i have no idea what that is right at the moment Ooh, are we ready we're almost right we have 0.1 minutes left we have 0.1 minutes and then cargo, okay, all right, let's go to our tracking page. What was that? I missed something. Looks like, Barta Blarney, thank you so much for that host. Yes, profit. We, we are uh, low voltage. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's do this quickly. I gotta, I gotta do this fast. Okay, start tracking. Hold on. I, I will absolutely comment in a minute here. I want to get these started. Let's uh, do our right starter to on. Cool. Hopefully that'll get started. And we can turn on. Yes. Okay. Your that flight will be on? monitored until you land and shut down the engines. And let's turn on, turn off this starter, turn on this starter. You know there's no pedo heat. We don't need it yet. We're on the ground. It's like 70 degrees. Right, that's left engine start. Let's turn on that generator. Turn off that starter. Now we can start turning on our lights. All right. And I think we're good to go now. So let's set up our navigation. We want to, what's our crew altitude today? We're gonna be at, top of climb is 260. We're just gonna direct it. I'm not gonna worry about actual procedures or anything. All right, and then uh, let's go ahead and for the moment bug our current heading, but we'll probably go straight into nav mode. All right. Is there anything else we need? Edo no heat. I know, there's no, what? Just to shut you up. There. Are you happy now? Are you fucking happy now? 
All right, let's get this thing started. We're gonna get this thing in the air. And then I'll be able to respond to chat. I've also got a little bit different uh, alignment. Why are we getting speed so slowly? Get off the ground. Airborne time logged. You're up. Bank left. And turn on autopilot, yaw damper. And then we're going to go for a little chain. So it's going to take care of my ascent. Should be good okay now i'm gonna monitor this but i'm gonna go ahead and flip my screens a bit couldn't have gotten a better music track for playing for playing for this time crunch i mean there's a few really good ones uh in this soundtrack so i, I don't know if that's necessarily true but it's pretty close uh, so the King Air is a lot more powerful than the uh, Grand Caravan we were flying last week. Uh, for one, it's a twin engine craft. I don't know why it still tends to uh, yaw. Um, so usually, with a single engine aircraft, because, well, single engine piston, right? It's rotating. And since it's rotating, it makes the, 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 the plane want to roll and yaw. Uh, but with twin engines, generally you have them set to spin opposite directions, so it cancels out the yaw and the roll. But for some reason, this one isn't. It, it, it still wants to roll and yaw on me. And it's definitely not following my nav line. At least not very well. Maybe it is. Who knows? Who can say? I feel like it's going direct to LGC instead of coming near it. So I think this is accurately plotting the path that a normal aircraft would take, but these waypoints, uh, but but Asobo pro programmed the uh, flight computer to want to go directly over the waypoints instead of making a gentle curve into the new heading. Yeah, yeah, see how it, once it locked up with LGC, it's now, correctly changing gotcha okay fun fact the c-130 hercules does that as well all the engines rotate the same direction so it doesn't correct <laughs> prop torque why well i guess it's it's probably because it's easier to train a pilot to can't to correct for the torque than it is to 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 manufacture two different engines to put on to the c-130 one for left engines and one for right. Or, it, I, well, it shouldn't even require multiple engines, but probably different props. I feel like it should be pretty easy to get it to spin the other direction without completely re-engineering it. Yeah, this does too. So, um, these actually rotate on their axis. So you don't actually slow down the propeller on this aircraft. 
uh, you rotate the fan blade so that it provides a different amount of thrust. So like if I if I throttle back to idle, it won't actually slow down the spinning of the blades. What it'll do is it will change their angle of inclination until they are basically just flat and they're just spinning for no purpose. Um, so there'll be no torque on the on, on the uh, on the axle that's spinning them. Not variable pitch, pitch props. They have them curved like scimitars. Oh, so basically it's a it's an outboard turbine, essentially. Like it's shaped like a turbine uh, turbine blade. That's pretty cool. See, I've never I, I've never actually flown in. I've, I've never actually been in a C-130, and I've never flown one in sim. It's probably a little too old for me to fly in sim. Uh, I would probably not be able to get it started even. Yeah, please do. Um, I love just just about anything aviation related. I I just geek and nerd out because I have so much fun with this. Thing. So essentially, what what I did is um, I turned into a uh, Sky Ferengi because um, this flight. Which was worth, like, oh, I don't know. Um, I think it was like 30 some odd thousand. It was like 33,000. Is now worth 128,000. Because I got it in the last minute. It was, it was 23 minutes. Yes, rules of aviation number 63. Only accept jobs in the last 23 minutes they're available. Also, never take a check. Oh, I'm above flight level 120. I am so unused to this. <laughs> I'm going to get dinged for that sort of thing all the time because I'm so used to the Grand Caravan that takes like five ever to get to flight level one, uh, flight level 120. Um, and now I'm in this thing and it flies like a bat out of hell. Um, which you'll see even more once we get to cruise altitude and we just start, we just, we just take off. This thing will probably do 230, something like that, uh, just at cruise. I mean, uh, and, and th that's indicated, not mock. So I have no idea what the actual ground speed's going to be. Looks like our true airspeed right now is about 170 and it's only going to get higher. Like we're about to fly into some mist. It's not quite a cloud. It's not dense enough for a cloud. Turn on some anti-ice just in case. Am I flying over California? No, it's not red. Okay. <laughs> I'm actually, uh, I think I'm in Georgia, maybe Tennessee. Where am I at? I'm in Alabama now. I, I took off from Georgia. I'm in Alabama now. I'll pass through just the corner of Mississippi and Tennessee, uh, then through Arkansas into Missouri. And that's where this flight goes. Um need to throttle back just a bit too much torque god damn this thing climbs <laughs> i mean look at how fast this thing is climbing 1750 feet per minute that is insane also i just want to say um asobo has no idea how aviation works i think um like they're measuring fuel in pounds, which is fine. It's it's not what I'd prefer because 90% of the world uses kilograms. The United States is kind of the last holdout, and even we kind of took that over. We, we don't really fight over that one much because of the Gimli Glider. Uh, but the one thing where we do hold out is we tell our altimeters in um, inches of mercury which is weird because everything else in aviation it, it's it's so strange like 
fuel goes in metric, altitude goes in stand in imperial, um, and then in weather we just split down the middle. And and when you're in Europe and and basically the rest of the world, you tell in uh, in uh, hectopascals. And in the United States and a handful of other countries, you get inches of mercury. But here you set your your pressure in in hectopascals. So I'm very confused why why you set the, the altimeter in the weather settings in hectopascals, but you set it on the plane in inches of mercury, and you do fuel in pounds, you do you do altitude in in feet. It's so weird. You heard me say Pentecostals? Oh, I don't think I said Pentecostals, did I? I, I guess it kind of sounds like Hectopascals. Um, <laughs> I don't think about what I'm saying. Like, I just talk. And then afterwards, if somebody says I said something weird, I'm like, what the fuck did I say? I have no idea. I just talk. And hopefully it comes out entertaining most of the time anyway. Blame your ears. I can totally do that. Um, especially when the chat is in on it, I have no problem blaming the chat for stuff. When you ask for it, that's your own fault. <laughs> I'm gonna back this little map out a bit. You can kind of see where we're going. I mean, we won't actually see where we're going, because we're going quite the distance. We're going about 400 miles. What's our true airspeed? It's about 193 knots. What's our ground speed? Ground speed here somewhere? Yeah, 191 knots. Hopefully, we'll be able to get a second flight in. I really would like to do a second flight. Unfortunately, it does not look like I'm going to be able to get in a second flight that is last minute. Although, I could probably look under... Let's see. Uh, no, I can't, I can't do that without pausing my phone. Damn. Oh, we're... I throttle again. My torque. Drop that torque back. I'm being honest, like I've I've got very, very uh low throttle in right now. Like what's this? 48%. I'm under 50% throttle. And I still keep over torquing. Hopefully we'll just get to our uh get to our cruise and just be able to oh any time now. I'm hoping it got my approach procedure. But I don't know how to actually step through the flight plan here. Because there's so much. So, I'd be able to, in a normal aircraft, I'd be able to figure out how to step through my flight plan and take a look at what my waypoints are and everything. Problem is, this thing is, everything's inoperable. Like, how would I normally do that? I would go down here, I would go to my flight plan, um, I'm sure it's here somewhere. It'd probably be somewhere in here, map, chart, some, somewhere in here. Um, fortunately, none of this works. All just inoperable. Absolutely everything. I don't think I can even set up a flight plan best I can I can get this menu uh, but unfortunately that doesn't tell me what I need to know take a look outside the plane and we get to look at how badly this is this is worked 
See, now it switched me to the external camera, not showcase. That's why all these instruments are showing up. And I don't want them to, but I can't get them to stop. Because it's it's bugged. Um, especially once I've been in here. A lot of times, it will get me stuck in the uh, cockpit views. Like, it, it'll still have all the controls for the cockpit. It'll have all these controls. But I'll switch here, and it won't have anything different. I can do this and try to kind of maneuver in and get a good view, but I can't really slew properly. But I can I can trans I can translate side to side, front and back. But what I can't do What I can't do is rotate, like left and right, and I can't rotate up and down. I'm just, I'm stuck like that. Why you'll see most of the screenshots I've been posting from Microsoft Flight are all from the same angles. It's because I can't figure out any other way to do it. It just, it doesn't work. It doesn't want to function. Go back in the cockpit. You'll talk me through it later? Yeah, please. Because I, I can't get it to work. Uh, I have tried hitting just about every key on my keyboard. From what I hear, the best way to handle it is to use your... Uh, use like a... Um, a... Um, Xbox controller. Control the drone. Um, unfortunately, I've only got the one. And I don't have a front-facing port to put it in. They want me to use the mouse. I try. I have clicked and dragged and and done everything on the mouse. Um, it does nothing. It left click, right click, middle click, uh, mouse four, mouse five. I've tried every button on my mouse. It does not work. And given given all the bugs that I have with the camera system itself, like I said, this is showcase. It's not supposed to bring up these instruments. Few names are bad. They don't just don't work. You have to remap everything. Yeah, these instruments should not be here. This should only be in external mode. But I'm in showcase mode where it shouldn't be doing that. Also, these are really stupid mounts for cameras. Also, the the number of fixed cameras seem to be moving. See, now there's ten. A minute ago, I couldn't scroll, and there was only three. is a way to turn that off. I'm sure there is. Fortunately, I don't know what it is. And see, I'm, I'm clicking and dragging left button, right button, middle button, both buttons, three buttons, side button, front button, back button, all the buttons. None of the buttons do anything. I can't get this to move. See, there are things... See, this is, this is where I get into it. There is so much potential in this game because there is a lot of potential there's, there's a lot of good that they did in how their key mapping works uh, but it doesn't it doesn't lend itself to properly mapping new things it does very well for unmapping old things or figuring out key conflict because i can just go in and search by keybind and get back all of the all of the commands that are bound to a single button but I can't go in and, and see, well, what are the necessary, what is the name of the thing that does this? Like when I, I can't say, you know, like right click 
FLC and it brings up a keybind for me to bind that button. Yes, you can. You can. You just have to you just have to hit it twice cuz it doesn't take it the first time. I don't know why. Uh, also, hello Sam. My name is Arak Attack. Thank you so much for dropping by the stream. Um, I'm doing very well. It's been a, a slow day, which is a good thing because I overslept. <laughs> um, so we're flying some planes today. We are doing on air. Uh, if you don't, if you've never heard of on air, uh, then I really suggest that you get it. Uh, it does cost. You get to flex my landing rate? I'm sure you will. I, I don't have great landing rates uh, because I don't fly GA much. And I consider the King Air to be GA, even if it's technically not. I'm not I'm not sure whether you would consider it GA. It is it is a craft that you can use for commercial use, uh, as I'm sure you can kind of see here. I can move the camera. There we go. So you can fly people, and that's what we're doing today. We, we are actually flying... Uh, cargo right now. We're not flying people. We're flying cargo uh, in on air. Got a minus two, a minus three, a zero, and a plus one. I'm really sure how you could have a plus one. Because that indicates you were climbing a wave from the runway at the time that you touched down, and you can't really climb away from the runway if the runway is coming up to meet you. Um, I'm not sure how you got a plus one. Well, that's, so that's not really how that's calculated. Um, it's not calculating your, 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 uh, AMSL. It's, it's calculating based off of your AGL. So it'd be impossible for you to make contact with the ground and have your AGL be climbing. That's, it's it's a physical impossibility. You have to get closer to make contact. Um, I'm not sure how you get a plus one. Unless the thing that you're using to calculate it is just incorrect. Which there, there are a lot of those. I've gotten like minus 20s and 30s on uh, Sim Toolkit. Uh, I've gotten 20, uh, minus 20s and minus 30s in, in Sim Toolkit. At times when I know I, I I did not butter that landing, I know that I made firm contact with them. Um, so some of them do weird calculations when you're doing landings. Uh, I don't know what you use to determine your your landing rate, but uh, it should be calculating using your AGL. And if it's calculating using your AGL, you can never make contact with a positive rate. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to call you a liar. I'm not saying that you haven't gotten it. I'm saying that, that the thing that you're using to calculate it shouldn't be calculating in a way where it's possible to get a plus one or plus two. Because your, your landing rate should be calculated using your AGL. For instance, there's there's a uh, runway uh, in Greenland called Narsarswak. Um, or Narsarswak or something. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but... There's a runway there, and it's got about a, a 14 degree upward grade. So the way that you land is you come down through this canyon, then you turn around over the over the uh, I can't remember if it's a lake or an ocean, but um, turn around and then you come back and you land, and it's got this huge upward grade. So at the time that you touch down, if you're not smashing your nose into the runway, you're actually climbing. Uh, by uh, by MSL, but by AGL you're descending. It's it's really weird. It's it's one of the few runways in the world that does it. But you actually do climb as you land relative to the water, but not relative to the. Um. So if 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 your landing rate calculator is calculating your your movement by a. Uh, it's that's probably what it's doing is it's using um, MSL. Yeah, yeah. 
Has has a has a climb in its runway. Yeah. So what's probably happening is your landing rate calculator is calculating using your MSL because that's much more easy to to get from the uh, from the simulator. And most times, 90% of the time, it's going to wind up being the same because your your runways are only sloped to like uh, under one to under a tenth of a degree over the course of the entire runway. But in cases like Narsarswak there, it'll, it, it will actually make a difference. Um, so all I can imagine is that your, um, your calculator was using MSL instead of AGL. And so although you were climbing the Essentially, the uh, runway was climbing faster and made contact with you. Um, that really should is not a good way to calculate landing rate. So I'd be interested to know what tool you were using, especially since I don't really have a good tool to use with Microsoft. Um, I'm still looking for one. Like, I've got uh, Sim Toolkit Pro, but I've seen it do some really weird stuff before. I'm not, I'm not real happy with Sim Toolkit's landing rate. Um, I don't know if they've fixed them. I know they have worked on them. I don't know if they're good yet. Um, but I was getting some very strange landing. Rate. But then I, I'm, I'm thinking Sim Connect also has some issues. Uh, for instance, in on air recently, uh, I got dinged for having for pulling like 4.6 G. And it, uh, this was on a buttery smooth landing. There was, there was no G load at all. Uh, it was probably like 0.96 G. But I got dinged for 4.6 Gs. There's no reason why I should have had that. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking there may be some lag in SimConnect. Uh, given the fact that it basically screwed up everything when SimConnect, when, when this launched. And can I kind of shit the bed? Hello and welcome, wifey. Thank you so much for dropping by. So we're flying the uh, the King Air 350i in Microsoft Flight Sim. We are actually going back to Kansas. Well, not to Kansas City. We're going to Missouri. Um, are we heading to Missouri? Uh, let's. See. We're going to West Plains Regional. Just left LaGrange Callaway in Georgia. We're currently, we're currently in the middle of uh, currently in the middle of Alabama, just north of Birmingham. We may actually wind up skating the corner of Mississippi. We may or may not actually go over Mississippi. But yeah, um... Really, I wish that Sobo could get the weather working. That's That was one of their promises. But the weather never really seems to work. Uh, they've been working on it for a while. They're, they're planning a uh, patch sometime this month. I don't know exactly when, but they are planning one. And it should have some fixes for the weather. Um, I think they basically dedicated their August update to SimConnect. Which is good, because it was shitting the bed back. Oh, um, speaking of shitting the bed badly, I want to let you guys know something. So, we've gotten some communications from Twitch. And, um, they're not amused. Yes, I'm taking on the Royal Wii because we are quite pissed. So, as a small channel, an extremely small channel, y'all can see, because uh, we've got four viewers right now, and that just ticked up. Um, small channels have a hard time on Twitch to begin with. They grow slowly, um, because all of their efforts go towards maximizing their best performance. 
which is fine. They're a company. I understand that. It's the rules of the game, and we exploit where we can in order to get the most good them. We try to try to play the margins and figure out where we can grab a few people here and there. And then we try to work together in order to build ourselves into something stronger. Um, to where we can actually start taking the benefits of all those programs. But, um, mostly that felt like Twitch was favoring the bigger channels and ignoring us. That's fine. That's, that's a benign neglect. I mean, it doesn't really hurt us. It just helps them more. Now, they're starting this program. I got a tweet the other day. Let me pull it up. I want to actually read this. Because it is absolutely ridiculous. So here we go, we got a message from Twitch support. Starting today, we'll be testing automated mid-roll ads for some viewers. These ads will directly support the creator and won't run if the viewer has an ad break in their channel recently. Your feedback is welcomed to shape the feed. Links to help.twitch.tv. Um, Here's the issue. We have no control of it. Let me just... I'm I, I'm not told that I can't say anything about this because I am not a partner. So I'm just going to tell you guys flat out. Um, when they tell you that these ads, these ads go to uh, support the streamer, don't listen. Absolute garbage. Uh, I'm going to go back to the very beginning of me as an affiliate. Um... I'm not sure exactly how long it was either February 2018 or 19 I'm not sure which I'm just gonna run it here okay so it looks like it was it was February 2000 so since February 2019 I have received one dollar and ten cents in ad revenue one dollar ten cents over what a year and a half more listen don't tell people that our ad views are going to help the streamer they're not they we, look we don't care about ad revenue because we don't get dick uh, so Feel free to go ahead and link that one. Uh, I've, I've got one that's loaded up in my in my paste uh, because I can't really jump around a bunch of, of screens right now. I'm already uh, stretching myself and keep clicking on the wrong screens. Um, so what that's going to do is it, it takes it out of our control. It's going to mute the stream. It's going to put the stream in tiny in a in, in one corner where the ad rolls in the entire view it's going to last between 30 and 60 seconds that's up to a minute of our stream we have no control over when it happens and it may not be the same for everyone okay so what they're telling us is is that up to 1 60th of every stream actually possibly even less than that they haven't told us what the interval will be on I'm hoping it would be once an hour. I wish it would be 160s. If they do it every half an hour, it would be 130. Um, of, of the stream, is going to be covered up. It's going to be muted, no matter what you do. Unless you're a subscriber. If you're a subscriber, you won't see it. Uh, or if you have Twitch Turbo. By the way, Twitch Turbo does still exist. It still says that it stops ads. Um, I'm not sure... If it does, because I have it and it has not been stopping ads for me. Um, so anyway, 
The point is, this is a very bad plan, right? I am staff on a stream that runs itself on giveaway. Granted, it's giving away art. It's not giving away games or giving away uh, tools or money or anything like that. We're giving away art. But if that giveaway happens during one of those one-minute intervals where you can't hear anything, we could be calling out your name saying you won and you don't hear anything because we're muted and you're watching an ad. Right? You could totally miss your win and we wind up giving it away to somebody else because you don't answer in time because you had no idea we were waiting for you. Um, here, you could miss landing. Landing is a big part of this stream. Like, the rest of the flight, the computer is doing most of the heavy lifting. A takeoff and landing, that's where I'm doing something, where I'm in control. And that means you could miss a large portion of what's important about the stream. Um, I haven't been familiar with this one. This will wreck ASMR. Yes, because they already have issues with volume leveling. They can't level the volume between the content that's being played by the streamer and by the app. Um, yeah, listening to an ASMR stream, nice, quiet whispers or, you know, the sound of rain, whatever your ASMR is, that's going off nice and quiet, but you have the, 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 uh, the volume pump super loud, and then all of a sudden you get intense battle music because they're, they're pushing Raid Shadow Legends or something. I don't fucking know. Look, this doesn't work, okay? This doesn't work for anybody. This is not good for viewers. This is not good for streamers. It's especially bad for smaller streamers because larger streamers, you know, your Markipliers, people will sit through a 60 second ad to keep watching Mark because he's a global celebrity. Nobody is going to sit here through a, a 60 second, they're, they're, I only do two landings, right? If you miss one of them, because there's an ad playing and it's muted and I'm just in a tiny little corner of the screen where you can't see anything, then you've missed half the stream. Um, you, can, you can miss a lot in that time. And as a smaller streamer, I don't have that pull. I can't be like Mark and say, there's gonna be ads, you're just gonna have to deal with them and there's nothing I can do. I can't do that. I'm reliant on engaging you guys 100% of the time. That's how I make my money, that's how I make my stream, that's how I get you interested. Right? That's what makes this work. So, I need this to not happen. Otherwise, it's a very good possibility. I may have to switch platforms because I cannot garner, garner an audience under these circumstances. If you guys wind up missing 1 60th of my stream, every time that I stream, like if I had control of it, that'd be one thing. I could go and take a break, grab some water, take a leak, you know, grab a snack, whatever, and I can leave an ad rolling while I do it. Matter of fact, I frequently do, and I try to remind myself to do so more often. Because that dollar ten is nothing, but it does add up eventually. And as I get more viewers, that dollar ten will add up more and more eventually. And being in the habit of rolling those ads when there's no content for it to block is a good habit to be in. But, Twitch has decided that they're going to try this regardless of what we want. They have gotten absolutely ludicrous levels of bad feedback from it. Nobody wants them. Not viewers, not streamers, not large, not small. Nobody wants this. Nobody is happy about this. So I'm going to post this. This is the uh, wrong button. So this is the feedback thread 
against this. <clears throat> if you can, if you don't mind, if you would be so kind, I would very much appreciate you going to that thread, voting it up, maybe commenting on it, telling them exactly how this would destroy your particular use of Twitch. Because they need to know that this is going to hurt people, this is going to hurt them. Because I promise you, I promise you, I would, any, any viewers, only one of two things will happen. People will start putting back on ad block, in which case everybody loses. Then we lose the, the pre-roll and post-roll ads too. We lose all of our ad revenue because they couldn't stop sticking their hand in the cookie jar, right? Or people just go to YouTube. And I'll tell you this, YouTube gives you a better deal too. As a streamer here, as an affiliate on, on Twitch, I make 50% of all my subs. If you sub to me here on Twitch, you pay $5, I get $250. Well, I get less than that because I also pay taxes out of it. The fact of the matter is, you pay $5, I get net, two, I, I get uh, gross $250. Right? On YouTube, it's a 70-30 split. I get 70%, they get 30%. At the end of the day, I think it winds up, I would wind up getting gross like $3. Or maybe $3.50, I can't remember which. So, YouTube's a better split anyway. But I don't want to do that because it's it takes a lot longer to get monetized. And it's a lot less reliable. And it's a lot less well known for this specific use at the moment. Plus, it's more saturated with people like Citation Max, Flight Deck to Sim, Captain Canada. You got a lot of really big channels there. And I would have to compete with them for viewers. Although, I think most of them do tend to stream earlier in the afternoon. And I tend to be getting off when I start. But I don't want to have to compete with people who I do admire. Where here on Twitch, we don't really have a lot of flight sim representation. Especially not in study level sims, where which is where I shine. Like, right now, I'm focusing a lot on MFS because it's the big thing. I am not happy with MFS. Not because I think it's bad. I think it has a lot of potential. But I think that right now, it's poorly implemented and not taken advantage of. I think that once they get the weather working, the weather will be absolutely fantastic. I think the fact that you will not have to be downloading scenery for absolutely every airport will be fantastic. I mean, you'll get something good enough, right? It'll still be pretty, even just the area around the airport being pretty healthy. Um, so, personally, I think that it has a lot of potential. I think it will develop into something that's amazing. But it's not there yet. Um, not for the uses that I have. For, for these little GA flights where it's just, I'm having fun flying the plane, it's fantastic. It's really fun. Uh, especially when you connect it with something like On Air or FS Economy. Personally, I prefer On Air. I prefer On Air a lot. Um, there's a lot more to it. And you can't cheese it as much. You can cheese FS, FSE really badly. You can just speed up time and make millions in a night as long as you can speed up and slow down time at the right times to where you're not crashing into the ground uh, but you as long as the plane actually flies the route and then you land it gives you the money with on air you can accelerate time but once you land, you get put in warp until the real life flight time would have expired. So if it's got an estimated en route of an hour and a half and you speed up the, the flight by three times, you get it done in half an hour, then you're going to be in warp for another hour. And you can't take new jobs. Um, so I prefer on air a lot. The issue is that all my study level aircraft 
in X-Plane are um, airliners. And I have not earned nearly enough money in on-air to be able to buy an airline, let alone rent one. Not even rent one, let alone buy. So, um, and plus they're, they're weirdly not set up to be very profitable. Or at least it seems that way. That may not be true. Uh, I'll have to look into uh, how much I could squeeze out of a job. But um, <clears throat> the last I saw it was like a million for a flight and just renting the, the, the A320 for an hour was like, I think it was like 80,000 per hour or 100,000 per hour, maybe 120,000. I don't remember. It's, it was an absolutely ludicrous number. Um, to where you'd barely be making any money because it's a two hour flight. So, um, I'm not sure where they're going to go with that. I'm not sure if they're going to update that or if there's already something to make that more profitable that I just don't understand. But I'm going to have to look into it more closely to see whether or not I can actually play this in X-Plane. Um, on air does work with X-Plane. I just don't have any study level GA aircraft because I'm not particularly a fan of GA. Um, but what I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to take a short break. Um, I'm going to grab some water. I'm going to mute the microphone. I'm going to get up and I'm going to stretch. And hopefully I'll be able to, to stave off their mid-roll ads by rolling one of my own while I'm not doing anything while I'm grabbing water. See, Twitch, this is how it should work. Because for all I know, right now, while I'm talking about this, you guys could all be watching ads, and I would not know at all. I could be telling you all who won the giveaway. I could be telling you all, um, I, I don't know. I, I don't even know. I could be telling you all how to enter, and I would never know, and you would never know. You would not know that I said anything, and I wouldn't know that you didn't hear me. And all of a sudden, my new giveaway would have no entrance, and nobody knows why. We could be telling you an amazing story about something that happened in the real world, and it was fantastic, but you don't hear any of it. Except the end. And then you have to either go back and watch the VOD, or have to ask me to repeat it, because you missed it. And then who knows, maybe somebody else misses it, because I don't know whether they're synchronized or not. It could be that for a minute, Every hour, all of Twitch gets shut down while people are watching ads. I, I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to take a quick break. Uh, I will be back here in probably three to five minutes. Meanwhile, I'm going to give you an external view. Uh, it's broken as fuck, so... I'll leave you with this. Close enough, right? Hey, I'll be right back. Thank you guys so much for being here. Be back in about three to five.
Welcome back, everybody. Sorry about that. Uh, took just a few minutes to go around, stretch my legs. Well, I'm not just sitting here in the sim for forever. Um, let's see how far we were. A little ways away from Lurky. Or look, look. Okay, so we may need to be starting a descent. Let's see, we are... 133 we need to drop. Uh, 240... Or 24,000 feet. So that's... 72 miles? And from Luki to Kuno... Thirty-eight months. I need to be thirty-four miles from Lucky to descend. However, seem to grab. button that works. in a little bit and see what it's doing. Okay. That looks okay. Yeah. That looks good. Perfect. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. That's what I needed. We are distance 19 nautical miles away from the Pull this back up. All right, now I can see you guys again. Sorry about that. So one thing that I do need to remember is as we descend, I need to turn my lights back on between 120 and 100,000 feet. I definitely missed that on the way up, and it's going to ding me, I think, 0.01% rep rep reputation, which is not ideal. But I can deal with it. I really can. Looks like we're going to be in probably 35, 40 minutes, 45 tops. But it looks like we may only get this one flight unless I can find a short trip um, from where are we going, you know. I can't even look up flights. Uh, I can't even do my own dispatch. And see, that's one thing that I do have an issue with with on air. There's not enough permissions managed. I would like the ability to allow people to uh, dispatch their own jobs from the VA. Um, fortunately, 
I don't think they really can. Um, the only way to do that would be to make them all managers, and that gives them all the powers. Uh, I can't just give them the ability to dispatch. Hmm. Unfortunately, that in that incentivizes people not to dispatch through the VA, and if they don't dispatch through the VA, then I can't give them an aircraft. Like, they're going to fly the aircraft that they're renting through us, but we're going to pay the landing fee, we're going to pay the fuel, we're going to pay for any associated fee with flight, also the rental fee for the aircraft, but... They're going to get all of the pay. Hmm. Not really loving that. But right now with this airline, um, we're doing a 50-50 split. Maybe one day, once we've got a good amount of money and actual aircraft that belong to us as an airline, we may get to the point of doing a 70-30 split that's in the pilot's favor. But right now, we need the money. Um, I'm going to have to learn how to use FBOs, because apparently that's where the money is. So I have to look into all the information that was posted on that. Unfortunately, I only saw it like 10 minutes before I went live, so I wasn't able to review all of the information and figure out how it works. Um, I may need to jump into a uh, Discord call with, with uh, Balti and Buana and figure out how to make money. <laughs> Because I would love to be able to, if you don't know, I've been running Dispatch. Um, me, Salty, and Krez run Dispatch for Buona's Airline. Uh, he's actually um, live right now, and when my stream is done, I'll, I'll raid him so that you'll see what airline I'm flying for. He's a great streamer, and he has a really good, strong audience. Uh, a very positive community. I really like it. it. He was actually the first person that I came to Twitch. I saw one of his uh, highlight videos on YouTube and I decided to come here, find out what it was all about and take part. And that was like 96 years ago. Um, he's actually been streaming with uh, Twitch for like 16 years. I know that the math doesn't really add up. Twitch didn't exist 16 years ago. That is true. But JT... Uh, JT became something else that then became Twitch. Um, and for a while ran concurrently. But he, he's done all all around. He's been, been around forever. He uh, gave a lot of advice that helped to guide the channel. Um, makes me look good. At least I think so. But anyway, we are very, very grateful for what I've learned from him. And I'll be rating him after afterward. But uh, he runs the airline that I'm currently a part of. I, I regret that at some point I will probably have to leave these airlines so that I can start my own. But that's not going to happen until I have more people playing MF MFS with me out of my community. <clears throat> Right, so it looks like 91 miles to Lucky. Hmm. I'm sure I can make it. I'm not going to worry about it. I'll wait till my 34 miles. Just hope that that's actually the distance to Lucky and not the distance to the airport. Which it should be. I'm pretty sure it is. Just judging by how slow we're moving on this map. I'm not so sure. I'm gonna go ahead and descend.
Yes mode. That is the wrong direction. Down by 1,000 feet per minute. And you're going to go down 1,100 because... Right. Wait, there we go. Got it. I'm going to go ahead and pull the throttle back so that we don't overspeed. Plenty, plenty of fuel. So we're going to descend nice and slow. We're going to try and uh, keep it fairly shallow. Turn on AI radio. North of Fife Alpha Romeo to request IFR to Kilo Uniform November Oscar ready to copy. Beachcraft Alpha Sierra, X Ray Golf Sierra Kilo is clear to Whiskey Echo Sierra Tango Papa Lima Alpha India November Sierra Mike Uniform November Airport as filed. Squawk 6306. Beachcraft Alpha Sierra, X Ray Golf Sierra Kilo clear to Whiskey Echo Sierra Tango Papa Lima Alpha India November Sierra Mike Uniform. Squawk 6306. Beachcraft Golf, Sierra Kilo, read back correct. Radar contact flight level 240. Continue to lucky turning and following heading 300. Proceed on course climb and maintain flight level 260. Okay, okay. Continue climb to and maintain 260. Proceed on course climb and maintain flight level 260. Beachcraft Golf, Sierra Kilo. Okay. okay. Fine, we'll do that. I'll wait for him to tell me to descend. Or now, I'll I'll give him one shot. Fuck it up. So help me. But uh, but yeah, I've been. Struggling to kind of handle radios and everything on my own. Uh, I don't like having to use the Microsoft Flight Sim radios. Um, but I do have an assist on right now. Mostly because a lot of these runways are just little grass strips in the middle of nowhere. Where I'm literally landing at Joe Bob's Backyard Barbecue instead of anything that looks like a runway. So, um, I have a... Uh, there's a there there's a uh, tool that makes the glide slope appear with these brackets, um, and especially since a lot of these don't have operable ILS, um, and I can land visually. Um, I'm not bad at it, just not very good at it with GA. Um, GA is not my thing, guys. I'm just being flat out honest with you. GA is not my strong point. I don't like it. <laughs> um, but I am having fun with this just because I don't have to be as tense. I don't have to be as uh, realistic as, as I do with my other aircraft. You know, like, with the 319, I want to fly by pursuit. Is that something I would really love to do one day? Fly an airline. I'll never do it, but, you know, 
I'd love to. And kick up our throttle a little bit. We're climbing. Okay. And just over to I'm just going to kind of trust them for now. I don't think they're going to guide me appropriate. I think they're going to tell me to descend way too late. But we're going to give it a shot. They should contact us about 34 nautical miles away from Lucky. I also don't like how they're on their radios. They, uh, they'll spell out phonetically. Everything in capital. So, even though Lucky would would in actual contact with ATC would probably be referred to as Lucky, they're going to call it Lena Uniform Kilo Kilo Yankee. Um, you know they 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 call it uh, West Plains Mike Uniform November. Um, when it should be West Plains Municipal. Uh, instead of calling it Kuno, they'll call it Kilo Uniform November Oscar. And I understand that's one of the things that they're kind of planning on addressing in the next update. Uh, I think they did have some uh, ATC phraseology on the agenda. So hopefully it'll address some of these that I think are really, really bad that makes me want to turn off ATC altogether. I also hope we get an option to just turn off ATC. It's not like it actually controls traffic, right? If you have 30 people who all spawn at KLAX, then it'll give them all clearance when they ask for clearance. Regardless of the fact that you've got, you know, got aircraft on opposite ends of the runway barreling at one another, they'll still say, no, nah, you got clearance, man. You're good. Just keep rolling. They have no problems with it. They just like there's no uh, TCAS. TCAS won't start screaming at you because there's another person. It won't care, even if there was an operable TCAS. So what's the point? You know, it, it, the whole point of flying with people, really, is actually doing it together, not just seeing ghosts of each other. You know, I want to be able to troll one of my friends by banking too too close in front of them and hitting him with my jet wad. You know? I want to I want to give them turbulence. I want to screw with somebody, but I can't. Not that I would ever actually do that. Right? Threaten it? That'd be fun. Going to negative altitudes, that's called crashing. I suspect it's going to tell me to go down to 8,000. It better tell me within the next five miles. Otherwise, I'm descending on my own. There we go. 
I'm gonna go ahead and turn off shield anti-ice is on prop anti-ice is on Yo's are on eh, it's gonna yell at me fine fine I'll turn them on shut up god you're a whiny plane also I know there's an inertial separator here somewhere but I don't know where it is <laughs> Probably inoperative anyway, but... Eight thousand feet. Okay, three three hundred feet. gonna give me a shortcut what they're planning or is it gonna start yelling at me to expedite my descent I really hope it doesn't yell at me to expedite my descent because my descent is calculated it should end up with me at the right altitude at the airport Now here's the thing I don't like. I throttle all the way back. This is what I get. Yelling at me about my fucking landing gear. Listen, I am at 24,000 feet. You can shut up about the fucking landing gear. We're doing absolutely fine on fuel. On descent into Lucky. <clears throat> we should be fine. As long as they don't try to do something funky. Come on. Come in. Just really doesn't want to. Like, nah, Rack. Nah. Would like to figure out where that inertial separator they're all lighting So we need 158 for full flaps. Extension altitude, or uh, speed is 182. Approach flaps at 202. Full flaps at 158. I'm descending slowly. They haven't yelled at me. No, no, you know, I'm probably fine. I'm sure, I'm fine. That's why I was hitting the wrong button. Hmm. 
Technically, I could throw flaps one right now. I could probably throw flaps two. No. Flaps one, flaps two. Um... Did I never pull my flap? I never pulled my flaps up. Oh my god. <laughs> I feel really dumb now. I've been flying the whole way with flaps up. <laughs> with flaps out. Oh no. And no wonder my climb rate was high. Yeah, I'm just wondering why I didn't snap my wings. Fast as I was flying? No wonder this flight took so long. I was expecting to be done a while ago. I'm not fancy enough to model that yet. Yeah, I mean, it would just tell me that... It would just tell me that I've over. It will either scream at me if you're over speed, or it would just say I've crashed because I overstressed the aircraft, which I have done that before. Go ahead and give us a little more thrill. But yeah, I mean, I understand it. Like, it's the same problem that we had with all the driving simulators in the 90s, right? We had uh, Midnight Club and we had Need for Speed, but they could never... They always had to choose between either having real cars or crash damage. Because you couldn't show crash damage on real cars because the people who made those cars didn't want their products to be seen destroyed. Right? Bad look for people that are making cars full of safety. And this is another thing that I don't like about the autopilot. We should be banking right. Or not, because it's going to insist on going directly over the waypoint and then rejoining this course. Even past that, you have the break between the need for games and stuff like Gran Turismo Forza. Right, but correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know this for sure because I never really played Gran Turismo or Forza, but you don't get realistic damage there either, do you? Like, sure, you get damage in, like, Grand Theft Auto, but they also make up all their cars. They're not real cars. They're modeled after real cars, obviously. Like, I might be a little high. No, you know, I'm probably fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wishy-wash about this the entire way. I, I just hope you know. sure about damage but Gran Turismo is the X-Plane where Need for Speed is the M MFS. Oh, definitely. And I, I like how you've actually said that. like, Because that's exactly how I feel. Right now, MFS is a game. Period. It's a game. Very arcade. It's more realistic than most arcades. And I think it's probably more realistic than uh, Need for Speed. Obviously, um, I think I think that there's more system real realism in MFS than is in Need for Speed. Um, but the difference between Gran Turismo and X Plane and Need for Speed and MFS is pretty accurate. I think um, X Plane, well, more specifically, not X Plane itself. I can't credit X Plane because X Plane is just as jank, right? The way you make X-Plane good is with third-party aircraft, and that's the same thing that will save MFS. I just want to be clear about that. But the payware aircraft in X-Plane are 
just astronomically realistic compared to um, compared to MFS in a way that I don't think Forza or or uh, Gran Turismo are are realistic compared to uh, Need for Speed. I'm also not sure whether or not Microsoft Flight uses a uh, that accurate of a flight modeling system. The reason why is because I haven't seen anything that has a realistic flight model, so you can't really judge how good it's how accurate its flight model is when you're not using anything that has an accurate flight model. Kind of a bad test. Kind of why I'm I'm looking. I'm looking forward to seeing what I think it's PMDG has with the 737. They're working on a 737 for MFS. It should be coming out sometime around the end of the year or the beginning of next year. Or the simple Cessnas are good. Well, here's the thing. Pretty much everything flies like a simple Cessna. Like even even when I was flying the A320, I could punch the the the, the throttle up by just just a hair. My speed comes up by about two or three knots. And suddenly I go from diving at minus 1400 feet per minute to ascending at plus 800. Without moving the stick. And that's not accurate. I, I, I really doubt that a three knot difference in speed is going to make the plane change its attitude by 2200 feet per minute. I mean, we're not talking about the Max 8, where if you apply too much thrust, the engines being where they are ahead of the center of gravity will make the thing go space shuttle status. We're talking about an A320. The only thing that's ever made an A320 do that is they had a runaway jack screw on, a, on, on, a, uh, on an A320 where it was trying to pitch to correct something and the jack screw was broken, so the... the uh, elevators just took it to the moon and then it stalled and, and crashed so yeah i've heard i've heard very much kind of the same things that you have that the simple cessnas and, and the ga like i said it does it does exactly what it says on the box it is good for ga it is good for for visual it's good for vfr it's good for uh the looks of the of of the scenery absolutely stunning the looks of the weather, good if you can ever get it to work. Yes, I did steal that directly out of Judge Dredd. <clears throat> but, um, I think that once they get the weather working again, that's, that's a big once, if they can get it to do what they want it to do. <laughs> the accuracy of MFS directly proportional to the po po possibility of her owning the aircraft you're flying. That's that's pretty accurate. Um, and that's not to say that like they can't get a, a an accurate 737, but you still are never going to own a 737. You might fly one someday, but you're never going to own one. All right, we need to turn our lights on. Or I get dinged for that again. It says we're three minutes away. I don't think so. Where are you getting this estimated time, Microsoft? I mean, oh, okay, it's giving me the ETE to Ogek. O Ogeki? Oscar Golf Echo Kilo Echo. That's probably what it's doing.
effect visual runway 8. Wait, what? 18? No. No. Not 18, 3, 6. RNAV 3, 6. Quebec transition. controller and kind of need to know this very very quickly I got him to talk back to me. Just, he's just stuck at this visual 18. We're not landing 18. Memphis Center, please repeat transmission for Beechcraft Golf Sierra Kilo. Beechcraft Golf Sierra Kilo, you are one tree mile south. Maintain present heading and altitude. Expect vectors visual runway 18 approach. Please stand by Beechcraft Golf Sierra Kilo. Beechcraft Golf Sierra Kilo, Roger. What are we doing? said that is not what I said there you go what no no uh, no we're not doing that we're not circle to landing this, this thing is just so stuck on wanting us to land runway 18. We're not... We're not landing 18. We're landing 36. No. It's a lie for. I didn't want flight following. Oh, stop! Shut up! I know! Shut up! I'm trying to do things!
Nope. Nope. And I'm gonna have to take control. We are way too high. Wait. We're fine. I'm not doing this weird trans... I don't know why it's telling me to do that. It's it's being weird. Like, I can see my IFR flight plan right here. We are straight in. This is what I'm talking about. This is all the jank, the weirdness. Go ahead and put out one set of flaps. No, no, we are too high. That's the runway. The game just really wants us to land 1-8, and now we're going to have to. Oh. God, I hate this game. You know what? No. I am just stubborn enough? No, there's no wind to speak of. Wind is at, like, three knots. It doesn't really matter what direction it's from. That's not notable wind errors. I had a flight plan. I'm fucking following it. I apologize if I get a little quiet right now. But that's because I am performing maneuvers. Like I am actually manually controlling the aircraft right now, which with GA is not something I'm terribly familiar with. They basically just circled to, to imitate a hold. Drop landing gear. Calm. Yeah, wind calm. But it's really not due to wind direct. It's just MFS being stubborn. Time log. Landed at Kilo Uniform November Oscar, West Plains Mud. And stop. Alright. Here we are at Kuno. Set our parking brake, turn off our lights. We're both off the whole time. Good. Engine off time logged. End of flight. 
registered in on air company. All right. Found of that. I reached level three. Fantastic. Uh, flight was monitored by on air Beechcraft King Air. I'm going to go ahead and throw that up. Let me. Right now you guys should be able to see what I am. Uh, so our engine was on 950 at LaGrange Callaway at 22. Uh, that's going to be in Zulu. Um, touchdown. And, and of course, this is with an, an offset of, I think, minus eight. So right now it's saying that it's just about 2,400. It's about, it's about zero, zero Zulu. Um, with my offset. Uh, so you can see, I did not get my safety bonus because I got dinged for my landing lights being on above flight level 120. Oh well. I only got 0.18% reputation change because I've got a relatively high reputation. Uh, I'll have to start doing longer flights to get more reputation change. Um, yeah, it looks like... Paid delay penalties of... 1,600 credits, but our pay for this job No, shut up. Airplane, fuck off. I'm gonna go ahead and what I am gonna do is gonna look at Cash flow state. I will have gotten half of it. If I got 61,235. That means that my VA got 61,235. And that's fantastic. As you can see, that's the most I've ever made. And some of these are things that I didn't do through my VA. So every time you see this payment for cargo, goods, transport, delivered, these are all ones I did for myself and I got full pay for. This one I just did through my VA. I only got half the, the money, and that's still amazing. Amazing pay. No, I'm not going to move off the run. It, it's it's not a serious enough thing. Um, I like, like I said, MFS is a game. X-Plane is a simulator. So I'm not going to worry about moving off the runway or anything like that. Uh, I'm, I, and I'm especially not going to risk getting dings. Plus, Microsoft wants to direct me towards a place to park. And it does so very badly. Um, like, as my first flight, I um, jumped on an A320neo. And it directed me to the GA parking. Instead of the terminal. Um... That doesn't work for me. Uh, it has sent me in GA to a jetway. That was fun. Uh, I did try telling it to connect the jetway and it crashed the game. Um, so I just don't trust it for telling me where to park. Um, I'm not gonna risk getting dinged in on air or moving the plane uh, for just getting it off the runway. So, it's just not worth it. It's it's just a silly thing. Um, Microsoft Flight is not a simulator in my brain. It's just a game. that it, it, It's a simulator in the same way that Farming Simulator is a simulator. It's not something that you use in order to learn how to fly. It's something that you use because you want to look... You, you, want, you want to play Farmville. You know, this is, this is airline CEO for... Uh, for somebody who has a really big video card, right? That's all this is. So I'm not gonna worry about real procedures or anything any more than I have to. But anyway, um, it's just about time for us to end. I'm just gonna let you go with uh, the safety brief that I forgot to run at the start that I was gonna use in order to, um, I was gonna use this in order to eat up time before the stream started and I forgot to run it. You know, it was supposed to give me the time to, to answer that, um, to answer the, uh, the to, to grab the late delivery. Uh, so I'm gonna run it now. 
I'm going to mute my microphone and I'm going to let you guys hear the air rack attack safety briefing. And then I will let you go with a raid to Mr. Buana. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'll be back in about six minutes when this is done. Greetings from the cockpit. This is your captain speaking. Thank you for choosing to fly your rack attack this evening. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you of a few things. Our AV system isn't working today, so we can't show you the $2 million safety video that an ad agency did for us. But since very little of what that video tells you will actually save your lives, I'm going to do it instead. Here's the big thing to remember. If we crash or make an emergency landing, statistically speaking, 95% of you will survive. If it's a serious crash, 55% of you will survive. So if this plane is going down, concentrate, because your life may depend on some smart decisions. Keep in mind that 80% of accidents happen within the first three minutes and the last eight minutes of flight. So that's when it would be wise to keep your shoes on and put your laptops away and stay focused. The safest seats on this plane are over the wings closest to the emergency exits. If you're not in one of those right now, here's what you can do to help ensure your survival. Look where your nearest exit is. Now count the rows between you and that exit. If the cabin was full of smoke, or upside down, or full of smoke and upside down, how would you get to that exit? Take a moment to visualize yourself doing that right now. Now look at your seatbelt. I know all of you know how to use it, but that's because nothing is making you lose your shit right now. It's common for people in emergency stress situations to try and open that thing by pressing a button that's not actually there, like the seatbelt on your car. So take a moment to imagine yourself lifting that flap in an emergency. In fact, do it right now just to get used to the motion. Emergency evacuations on the runway are more common than crashes. In the event of something like an engine fire, we need to get you all off the plane in about 90 seconds. This means you need to leave your fucking bags in the overhead bins and get off the damn plane in a quick and orderly manner. Those bags will bring the evacuation to a virtual halt. My first officer and I will be trying to get off this plane and the last thing we want is to be cockpit blocked by your roll-on. Now you're probably well aware there's a life jacket under your seat but forget about it. They're less likely to save your life than those little airline pillows. Sure, there was a famous 2009 emergency water landing on the Hudson, but there were boats on hand immediately and nobody actually needed the life vests. There was a flight that ditched in the Caribbean in 1970 where 40 lives were likely saved by the vests, but there was also one off the coast of Ethiopia in 1996 in which many passengers put them on too early and couldn't get out of the flooded fuselage. To put it another way, if we replaced those life vests with a box of chocolates, it wouldn't alter your survival odds. Let's take a second to talk about those oxygen masks. Here's the thing. If we lose cabin pressure at a fairly low altitude, no big deal. You can breathe just fine. If we lose cabin pressure at cruising altitude, you can't. If that happens, here's what I'm required to do by law. I'm going to push the nose of the plane into an emergency descent that's going to feel like a roller coaster drop and it's going to scare the crap out of you. But it's not dangerous. I've practiced. Also by law, I need to notify air traffic control as well as the airline, and I need to do all that before I can get on the microphone and tell you what the hell is going on. So don't be surprised if you don't hear from me for a bit. I'm just doing my job, and you're going to be fine. For those of you who don't manage to get your masks on in time, you'll probably pass out and then wake up in a minute or two when they get the plane to a lower altitude. You want to know what the biggest danger is? The biggest danger is actually that your luggage or those duty-free bottles you purchased and put in the overhead compartment will fall out when you open it and hit someone on the head. There are actually several thousand reported injuries from this every year in the United States alone. By contrast, the FAA only reports 58 or so serious injuries from turbulence. So one could easily make the case that we should, we should be handing you a helmet and skip the seatbelts. Another big risk is the drink cart. Seriously. It weighs over 100 kilos when fully loaded, and every year passengers get their elbows, knees, and feet broken when the drink cart slams into them. So keep your arms and legs tucked away. Why haven't airlines put some safety padding on the drink cart? I don't know. 
Maybe because you keep screaming at the attendants for your chicken being bland or your drink not being cold. Same goes for spilled proof coffee in teapots and cups with lids. Every year, some poor passengers get hot coffee or tea in their crotch when there's a bit of turbulence, but until the airlines fix this, I'm afraid you're on your own. Now, you're probably wondering how can this bucket of bolts stay in the sky if we can't get the AV system or the latch on your tray table to work properly. To be honest, we sometimes wonder that as well. But the stats speak for themselves. The actual risk of dying in a plane crash is 1 in 11 million according to the Harvard School of Public Health 2006 study, so you're far more likely to be struck by lightning or killed by a shark. And it's certainly much safer than driving. Right after 9-11, many were scared to fly. 12 to 20 percent fewer people flew. But because more people made driving trips instead of flying, a German professor estimated that an extra 1,595 people died in car accidents in the year after 9-11, just in the U.S. Just a little reminder that we'll probably keep the seatbelt sign on for nearly the entire flight, because our flight crew doesn't want to be bothered in the galley, and they definitely don't like trying to squeeze by you in the aisles. That or I forgot. Either way. Anyway, please sit back and relax while we take forever to serve you a drink and a barely editable meal, and then leave the tray on your table, making it nearly impossible for you to squeeze out of your chair and into the toilet. Looking forward to flying the salty skies with you again. All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening to that. Uh, I did work really hard. It took me about an hour and a half to get that completely recorded. I know it's only six minutes of sound, but uh, it's really hard to not make mistakes. Anyway, thank you guys so much for being here tonight. I'm going to send you off to Buana, and you'll see the owner of the VA that I fly for. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate it. I'm here every week on Tuesday and hopefully Wednesday and Friday as well. So I'm thinking of changing that possibly to Thursday and Sunday or Saturday. Um, we'll see how it goes. Thank you guys so much for being here, and I will see you guys. Bye-bye.